You remember Free Willy, that adorable killer whale who longed for freedom until the little boy came to save him? Well, as it turns out, it may have been more than just Hollywood's poetic license to think a magnificent mammal like that might chafe against captivity. That is the belief held by a group of filmmakers behind a new documentary called Blackfish, who argue that these apex predators, which are no real threat to humans in the wild, may be driven to violence against us when they become tourist attractions. Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis. The scene seems so joyful. Video of SeaWorld trainer Dawn Brancho performing with Tilikum, a spectacular killer whale. She feeds him, plays with him, bonds with him as they lie down together in shallow water. And then something goes terribly wrong. This whale grabbed her, pulled her in the water. Tilikum, the 12,000 pound, 22 foot long killer whale, kills the 40 year old trainer, igniting a controversy that's still playing out today. I didn't understand why a killer whale would essentially bite the hand that feeds it. She was, you know, his trainer. So, you know, presume that they had this loving bond. Gabriella Copperthwaite is a filmmaker whose latest documentary, Blackfish, examines just how Tillicum and Branchow arrived at that fateful moment three years ago and raises the question, should killer whales be held in captivity? One of the things that shocked me the most was how violent and prolonged it was. That is the stuff of nightmares. Brancho's death was particularly shocking because she was one of the most gifted and experienced trainers at SeaWorld. Dawn was the poster child for SeaWorld. She's beautiful. She's blonde. More than all of that, she was a top, top trainer. But should this incident have been a surprise? There have been four deaths involving killer whales in captivity, and Tilikum has been associated with three of them. For someone who's never met him and ever spent any time with him, how would you describe him? Uh, well, I always thought Tilikum was a real puppy dog. It kind of shows you how naive I, I was. Tilikum is the patriarch of roughly half of all the killer whales at SeaWorld Parks. He's a crowd favorite. What is the lore that causes people to just fall in love with these animals? They're such impressive animals to look at, the capacity of those animals, the intelligence. When you look into their eyes, you know somebody is home. They're spectacular. In the wild, the animals live in rich, tightly bound communities. They live in these big families, and they have lifespans very similar to human lifespans, but the adult offspring never leave their mother's side. Is it true that killer whales have never been responsible for loss of life in the wild? This is a true. A human life. This is true. There's no um, documented case of a killer whale ever killing uh, anybody in the wild. It's only in captivity where these incidents have happened. Copperthwaite traces what she calls a 40-year experiment back to the beginning. It was a really exciting thing to do until Everybody wanted to do it. The hunts from more than 40 years ago to capture the first killer whales for the first marine parks. They had speed boats, they had bombs they were throwing in the water. They heard the whales into coves. The animal's intelligence was readily apparent. The adults without young went east into a cul-de-sac and the boats followed them thinking they were all going that way while the mothers with babies went north. But the capture teams had aircraft, and they have to come up for air eventually. And when they did, the capture teams alerted the boats, and then they had fishing boats with seine nets that they would stretch across so none could leave, and then they could just pick out the young ones. The hunt separated young killer whales from their mothers, destroying their social connections. This is the worst thing that I've ever done. When he was about two years old, Tilikum was captured off the coast of Iceland in 1983. You know, he's sort of taken from his mother at this very young age. And then he's dumped in this park called Sealand of the Pacific and is beat up on consistently. At night, Tilikum and the two other killer whales were kept in a holding pen just 20 feet across and 30 feet deep. They were immobile for the most part. It didn't feel good. It just didn't. Closing that door on him and knowing that he's locked in there for the whole night is like, to staff, to, whoa. It was at Sealand of the Pacific in 1991 that Tilikum was responsible for the death of a trainer for the first time. The whale grabbed her back foot and pulled her under. It was the very next year that Tilikum arrived at SeaWorld in Orlando to the delight of tourists who knew nothing about his past. 
But in 1999, a second death, when a park visitor managed to stay after the park closed. What happened next is unclear. The next morning, he was found draped across Tillicum's back, dead from hypothermia. It's not known what role, if any, Tillicum played in his death. But fatalities aren't the only concern. The very behavior of a killer whale isn't 100% predictable. From 1988 to 2009, before Don Brancho's death, SeaWorld generated 100 incident reports of killer whales engaging in undesirable behavior, including nearly a dozen that involved injuries to trainers. Swimming with 8,000 pound killer whales, as a human being, our bodies are not designed to do that. But then you would also have injuries related to aggression with the whales for sure. In one incident, the trainer made the mistake of putting her foot on and off a killer whale. Watching the video, knowing Orchid, your stomach drops because you know what's probably going to happen. She grabbed her foot. You see her just ripped from the gate. You hear her just scream out, somebody help me. The trainer was eventually released, but not before having her arm badly broken. She's very lucky to be alive, that's for sure. Tragically, Dawn Brancho did not have a similar outcome. She talked about her whole life. She knew she wanted to work with the animals, and SeaWorld was her dream. We embarked on this sort of 40-year experiment here, the Marine Park experiment. But I think the results of this 40-year experiment are that uh, we can just never, ever truly give them what they need and that it's actually very dangerous for us to try. The government agreed. In the wake of Brancho's death, OSHA undertook an investigation of the incident and ordered SeaWorld to keep trainers further away from killer whales, even placing them behind barriers, ending the intimate and dramatic acrobatic work that once thrilled audiences. SeaWorld continues to appeal the decision and says OSHA has a fundamental misunderstanding of how to properly and safely care for and work around these animals. SeaWorld says they were deeply saddened by the death of Brancho and that since 2010, the company has voluntarily implemented significant changes to the training protocols for its killer whale program that have proven to be safe and effective. SeaWorld believes that marine parks play a crucial role in society. Displaying marine mammals like killer whales provides an invaluable educational resource to the public. They point out that 11 million people visit SeaWorld parks each year, and they hope each leaves with a greater understanding of these remarkable animals and the challenges they face in an increasingly imperiled marine environment. Even Copperthwaite says she doesn't want to see SeaWorld close down, just change. I think that they have uh, the financial resources to be able to sort of shift this whole marine park circus-like environment uh, into one of education. With summer's arrival, thousands of visitors will be coming to SeaWorld in Orlando, thrilled at the sight of Tillicum performing in captivity, as he has for the past 21 years. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Davis in New York. Blackfish is running as part of the American Film Institute's AFI Docs Film Festival in Washington, D.C. That festival celebrating excellence in documentary filmmaking and storytelling with a range of documentary showings and discussions through the weekend. And Blackfish opens in select theaters in New York and L.A. on July 19th. Our thanks to Lindsay for bringing us that.